with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome everyone to the January 17th council meeting. All my comrades are here and Christina is here. So please bear with me as I muddle through. This is my first one doing this, so we'll definitely make some mistakes. So bear with me. So what we will do first things first is uh, I guess we'll call the meeting to order, I should say that. We will discuss this S HSA discussion so that we can get it off the table. These gentlemen know which way they need to go. Um, that way they don't have to sit through a whole meeting to get all this resolved. Um, I got an email here from a gentleman named Bill Sylvester. And I will read to you exactly what he sent to me. And to reiterate, applicable laws apply. An individual on Medicare cannot contribute to an HSA or have an employer contribute to an H HSA within six months of an individual enrolling in Medicare. H H gosh darn it. HSA funds cannot be used to pay insurance premiums. An employer can, if we decide, if they choose, to increase the wages of an individual to cover the cost of a benefit, they're no longer eligible for it. The additional wage cannot be pre-taxed. Therefore, it will be taxed as income. An employer can do this on an individual basis as long as it's not tied to benefits. If it is tied to benefits, it must be provided to all individuals who qualify as not to be considered discriminatory. And last but not least, as an aside for county governments, and you guys will appreciate this, while council may approve funding for such a program, it is the commissioners to decide whether or not to implement the policy. And that is the email I have right here concerning the HSA. Now, has anyone got any discussions on the board? <coughs> So they're saying, what if, what if you don't take Medicare? If you don't take Medicare, this the HSA is a benefit to our high deductible medical insurance. And if you decide not to take Medicare, you stay on insurance. You do not have to pay a penalty until you're 69 and six months. So if you decide not to take Medicare and stay on the health insurance, you can, can get the, the HSA, nothing has changed because you're still on the county insurance. I wonder, is that part A or just part B that you get on? Because they're mm -hmm. separate deal. Medicare period. Medicare yeah. period as far as I know. Yeah. The way I understood it, as soon as you turn 65, they automatically put you on part A, but you can refuse part B. Mm -hmm. So you're talking be a gray area. You're not in my wheelhouse, I don't know when. <laughs> I just know that it's all one Medicare A and B, one's hospital, right. one's right. the doctors. And they don't charge you for A. They don't take A out of your check. That's correct. But B they do. But again, it's Medicare. Right. So I I didn't get into splitting straws. Yeah. yeah that's, so. And so. Um, I tried to call the IRS all day yesterday and all these were recording over and over. <laughs> the IRS to, says it is a basic IRS regulation yeah. that if you do Medicare, you cannot collect an HSA. Now, if you have an HSA, say in April, in the county, or in this case, the county has paid four months in your HSA, that's yours. They're not going to take that away from you. But after that, you cannot contribute to it, but what is in there is yours right, yeah. to use. You're not going to lose it because you decided to do it. Yeah, well, just to clarify what you just said, said something about 
up until the time you're 65, there are certain days, months before they start, quit doing it? Or that's just when you turn 65? For Medicare? Or when you go on Medicare? You have to, it's the month you turn 65. Okay. But you legally get it until that month, right? The HSA <laughs> benefit? Yeah. I would think. I would, yeah, I, I it, it says here six, six months. months. Let me read it again. That's why. Yeah, you have to sign it. If you don't have an employer contribute to an HSA within six months of enrolling in Medicare. Like I say, and you know as well as I do, some of this is confusing uh, as I'll get out. And some lines contradict each other. Mm -hmm. So, again, I'm asking for guidance. <clears throat> Anybody else have any guidance? Well, sounds like for me what he's saying, we don't dare pay anything that they've been requesting, so. And the only issue I have was if we decide to offer these gentlemen, in this instance, that actually went, We've contradicted ourselves because we didn't allow the uh, prosecutor's office to pay a benefit. We can't change the salary ordinance already because it's been adopted, adopted and, approved. and approved. So we can't change it for this year. So even if it was decided, there's nothing we can do this year. For me, that looks like it's age discrimination. That seems like age discrimination to me. If somebody turns 65 and you're taking pay away from them, basically, you're taking no, that's the law. money from them. Well, I understand. That's, like I said, that's, I read it verbatim. Yeah, what was sent to me. And, mm -hmm. So as, as I read this, if the gentlemen have gone on to Medicare, at age 65, and I say gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, whoever it is, in this case, you guys. You're not eligible. You're not eligible. You're going to lose the HSA benefit. Yeah, we, we knew that. Yeah. That, that was never a question. Well, and I can't, again, I'll, I'll let the board say it. I'm going to stop. If, so if there's a way where you can opt out of Part A also, you wouldn't be on Medicare at all, then they're going to keep paying you until 69 or something you said? Again, if, if you can opt out of Medicare, then it's, according to what I've read, it's 69 and a half because it's, you have to sign up six months before your 70th birthday. You have to pay a penalty. That's right. You, you have to sign up Medicare. With or you get a penalty. You can, you can opt out, you can opt out until 69 and a half, yes. but if you opt out, you will pay a penalty at 69 and a half for not taking Medicare at 65. For every month well, you have you to do. take it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if you're still on credible insurance, I've, I've been through this for the last month. Once Medicare is always primary. It doesn't matter whose insurance you carry besides it. Medicare is your primary insurance. I mean, even if, even if you don't take it at 65? If you don't take it at 65, you can stay on the county's insurance or whatever insurance policy you have. Yeah. But it, if you choose not to take it at 65 and wait till 69 and a half, that's fine. But be aware that at 69 and a half, you will pay a penalty when you sign up for Medicare. Well, they told me that as long as you've got credible insurance, wherever you're, you're somewhere, that you do not get penalized once until... The only way you're going to get penalized is what they told me. I'm just I know. Out. They said, I called two, I was up at the office the other day. It's how I've been, and I've been on the phone with different ones. And they said, as long as you're still on credible insurance, until you say so you lose your job and you lose your insurance, then you can sign up any time without a penalty, is what, the way I understood it. And I've asked, I, this was two phone calls and being up at the office and stopped it. I mean, I'm not arguing with Kathy, I'm just saying. No, I'm not arguing. I, right? I realize everyone gives you a different answer. You get a different answer yeah. every time you talk to them. So it depends on who you talk to right. and what day of the week it is. I 
yesterday. I tried to call him on the phone for an hour or two yesterday. Was trying to call the IRS when I get recorded. You're not going to get anybody on number IRS. two. Number three, number three for this blah blah blah. It's a bunch of bullshit. I mean, our government is. Mm -hmm. Somebody's gonna answer the phone. You know, get a lots of recording. That, that's true. You can't even get get a person. There's no way. Set, even if you sit, you know, wait for an hour to talk to a person, you can't even get that far with them. There's no person to talk to. But what me and Jeff found on the website on their on their website is, you know, basically what Kathy's saying. For if you decline it at 65, which you can. Once you get to the age to work mandatory sign up, you don't have a choice in it, you're penalized a percentage from the day you know you was able to sign up to 65 until mm -hmm. that 67 pound. That's right. So they take yes. that money away from your monthly check. I understand what you're you saying. Know, I've read that part, but the way they told me as long as you stay on the insurance, even at 65, you, you don't get penalized. Like I said, that's just they will penalize you one way or another. We're going to have to rail that a little bit because we can argue Medicare, yeah. IRS, <laughs> we're all blue in the right. face. Our, our information here is on the HSA. Right. The penalty so, not, doesn't have any bearings on this. No. Right. So, any other guidance from anybody? Well, not guidance. I have zero guidance. I do have a comment. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that surprising. Well, I know. I know. So, so, let, so I will comment to, so Steve talked about age discrimination. The only thing that I'm concerned about is where, where would this, how far reaching would this discrimination be? If we granted it, do you guys deserve it? No doubt about it. If we granted it, so then why wouldn't um, somebody that is an employee that's already on insurance but they haven't um, insured their children because they can't afford to, why wouldn't they come to us and say, Well, why are we any different? You discriminated against us. Or an employee that hasn't covered their spouse. Why wouldn't they? I mean, I just am afraid this will, the domino effect will be far reaching. That's my only concern. And it's really tough sitting up here because it's hard to be objective because we know you guys. We see you. I, I totally understand where you're coming from. If I were sitting out there, I totally understand where you're coming from. So it's hard to be up here and be objective and think about what is the best decision for the good of the all instead of just the few. There. So I'm, I'm, I would have trouble, even though you deserve it, I would have trouble approving it. Those are my thoughts. I got a question just thinking out loud, I guess. What about our congressmen and senators? Do they their health care quit when they leave the office? They get it for life. Don't so they? why they get it for life and we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting to know the answer to that. Because they Yeah. Because they have post employment benefits. What about benefits? Enjoy, and we don't have that. No, we're getting off topic. <laughs> the end. There. I don't know that I have an opinion, honestly. Um, the situation, like Bill said, I don't, I don't know. I totally understand where they're coming from. I just. I think our hands are tied. I just, if we have to follow the law, we can't, there's nothing we can do whether we want to or not. Mm -hmm.
So I guess where we stand is, number one, it says here the commissioner decide whether or not to implement the policy. Right. We're to fund it. But if we make a decision here tonight not to fund it, it won't go to then the, the point is moved. Right. So unless there's any other comments, I'll let someone else <coughs> kind of order it. But if not, um, Phil, help me out. This is the first um, time um, I've done so, this. Okay, yeah. so, so I'll make a motion regretfully to decline your request. Can I ask one more question? Yes, sir. You said if we wanted to, we could give it to them a different way. This wouldn't be pre-taxed. We could just give them that twenty-five hundred dollars a year. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't be pre-taxed like it is now. Yeah. If we do that, then we open the gates. Yeah, I understand. To everybody, I know. unfortunately, and. Yeah, we would have a line out the auditor's office all the way down. Yeah. You're going to have every employee that doesn't mm -hmm. choose to take insurance wanting their extra pay too. You yeah. bet. Maybe a stipulation that about 65 or over. I know it's. Well, that's age discrimination, anyway. Bill, continue. Um, I'm sorry. So that's no, all right. So right. I'll, make, I'll make a motion um, regretfully to decline the request of. The uh, paying it would be a benefit HSA to employees um, once they turn 65. That's my motion. And then, uh, what if they do not take Medicare? You're in the weeds. Are they going to be on it? They're going to stay on it if they do not take Medicare at all. We should make the motion that says once a person selects Medicare, then they're instead no. of their age. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. There. You know, if a person opts into Medicare when they're old enough to select it, the HSA contributions stop. Okay, there. Pardon me? We have no way of knowing who selected Medicare. Look for not on county insurance, because that's a benefit for county insurance. But we would have to have that reported. He's asking for it because he has a different purpose. But had he taken Medicare and stayed on the county's insurance as a supplemental, we would have no idea that he accepted Medicare. That's not generally we don't know that. Practice has been since prior to even me being my auditor. Once people turn 65, they don't receive the HSA anymore. Yeah. So if you want to offer HSA, even if they don't accept Medicare, you would probably need to do a resolution to declare that. So in this instance, a motion would be 65. So, so once, they, once a person reaches six, the age of, once an employee reaches 65 years of age, they are no longer receive HSA benefits. Yes? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's my motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Lori seconded it. All in favor? All opposed? Two, three, four, five, five to two. It passes five to two. And we will proceed from here. Thank you for bringing it up, gentlemen. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for your time. We appreciate what you guys do, even though at times you don't think we do. So let's move on, if we could, please. Uh, we'll do department updates. Travis, you're sitting in the front row. So we're supposed to start with the back row. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you taking the lead off? New format. Yeah, new year, right? <coughs> um, oh, I guess I got it. So I emailed out the reports, the monthly reports, and then the, uh, the December reports, and then the end of the year reports, along with the two year comparison stats. Um, any questions over any of those? Couple highlights on the two-year comparison stats: uh, criminal arrest, excluding warrants, were up 139 percent last year. Um, I believe that's a direct result from the increase in traffic stops. Um, fatal crashes are also up 150 percent, which we talked about that throughout the year. I've got the good reason that, that we had those, but um, we went from two in 2022 to five in 2023. So, I um, mean, miles patrols went up just a little bit. 
Any questions over any of those? Commissary report as well. Is there any questions on those or on the commissary report in July to December? So if you would speak to, and thank you for these reports, Yes. by the way, most interesting. If you would speak to, in the commissary report, activities to maintain order and discipline, prevent criminal activity, public relations, $5,528. So those are specific to basically any of the PR stuff that, that we do as a department, um, any of the stuff that we hand out. Um, I know specifically with this, it was a uh, popcorn machine rental for the fairgrounds, what you think about popcorn, um, any of the PR stuff, the, the balls, the yardsticks, any of the, the publications, um, uh, fest, any of the parades or anything that we were at, um, Fulton Fund Day, basically anything that we do PR related is, is what that fund is utilized for. Thank you, I just didn't know what that was, but that's very worthwhile. Yep. So, so the public and especially you get to know you guys and yep. and know that you guys aren't the bad guys. <laughs> and that's one thing that we really try to push out, or I try to really push out, is we want to be more visible in all the things, whether it's Fourth of July or Fourth of July. But anything we have an opportunity to be out and, and be interacting with the public, I encourage you to do that. So, um, so thank you. Thank you. Any other questions on the commissary? No, I have none. Okay. With commissary, the statute that governs that says that we can use commissary for nine different reasons. Eight of those are very, very specific, but the ninth one says, uh, any other purpose to benefit the Sheriff's Department that is mutually agreed upon the county fiscal body, which is you guys. So that brings me to office furniture for port security. Um, they recently went through a remodel in port security. The Title IV-D office is now the port security office, and they need furniture to um, put in there. So uh, we've gotten a quote of $3,800 for the desks, two desks and four chairs. Two chairs put out with the, uh, the scanner and with the, the baggage scanner and the metal detector, and then two, two chairs back in with the port security offices. So I'm requesting your guys' approval to be mutually agreed upon that we can use commissary funds to fund the office furniture for 36.8023 for core security. And you have those funds, oh, yeah. obviously. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, so you're asking for our blessing. I, yeah. I don't know if it needs to be a motion and approval, but it needs to get in the minutes somewhere. That right. way, if it's odd. And I think we could probably, I was talking to Ron about this earlier, we could probably justify it without this. Because court security does handle inmates when they're over there, and so it is a benefit to the inmates. But just to clean it up to make sure that there's no issues at all, if we get your approval along with with me mutually agreed upon, then it's it's a no-brainer for state board account. So. Okay. And then we also talked. Travis is going to get something to make things easier to find two years down the road if the state board accounts comes in and says, "Hey, you did this." without looking through every minute. So we do, he's gonna come up with an ordinance that, to come up with to make it easier so that we can- The mutually agreed upon mutually stuff. Mutually agreed upon is a little clearer. So other counties, that's what I was talking to Ron about ahead of time. Other counties basically put it out in an ordinance that says this is what we agree upon that commissary could be used for. And then that way, if it is ever audited, we don't have to go back and find this exact meeting at this exact time at this exact place that says that hey yeah there was a motion that was approved we can refer back to an ordinance that, that was approved that says hey look this is why we did it this way because this ordinance says we could so uh, a lot of other counties have done that i've got a couple examples talk to ron about it he's interested in it so we'll get something put together and, and present it to you so. so this ordinance would then cover the the umbrella of right. things that could be paid for right. out of commissary exactly. outside office. of those eight right. those eight statutes Right, yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. And other counties have done it, it just it cleans it up for yeah. having to go back to these meetings exactly. to look for that specific exactly. mortgage. So, because uh, who knows, you know, two years from now, I'm not gonna know what meeting we talked about office furniture for court security, so. Right, true, good thinking. So having said that, I'll make a motion <clears throat> that we allow um, tra Travis to <clears throat> use funds out of commissary to buy furniture for Court security. Court security. I'll make that motion. Keep that. Can you help? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me to make motions? 
I don't care. I didn't ask for a motion then. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite all right. You've got practice. This guy is supposed to be, uh, so I have to interject something. So excuse me, everybody. I told John to give me the dad look when I was overstepping and he's not been doing it. <laughs> so we'll blame him. Sorry. That's fine. You're doing a fine job. Did she try to say your old John or what? She's telling me. All right, motion to make a bill by Steve to approve Travis purchasing furniture for the court security. All in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Approved. We'll get that order. And it's in the minutes. It's in the minutes. Now, whoever's going to have to go find that, it's on them. That's right. I can't remember if I've updated you guys since uh, uh, Larry Jolly uh, retired, but Matt Utter was promoted to chief deputy, and then Derek Halterman was promoted to detective. Um, we took possession of the two hop Tahoes that we ordered, the second, the last two of the three from last year, the first week in January, so those are on the road and operational. Um, we invoiced for a little over $62,000 in December for out-of-county inmates. Um, of those, I'm looking for the breakdown here. Um, 25,000, almost 26,000 was for out of county inmates, Wabash County, Howard County, I gave one for Miami County. 24,000 was federal inmates, and then 12,000 was for Department of Corrections. Um, cool. So, in that fund, the bond reduction fund, I looked yesterday morning and there was a little over 500,000 in there um, since, since the ordinance was adopted, I think in 2021. So, um, February 26, 9 to 11. Um, we've got a Korean first responder training, Korean culture first responder training at the sheriff's office. Um, they're expecting an influx of Korean population because of the EV plants in Kokomo and in New Carlisle. So it's basically a first responder training for dispatch, fire, EMS, and law enforcement on just kind of the cultural differences between America versus Korean. So um, that's at 9 to 11. Anybody's welcome to attend. We're going to put some stuff out. They're supposed to be sending me a flyer, and I know I'm going to get that to Gail. She's going to push it out to, to all of her people. So. Thank you. But they're going to be South Korean. Pardon me? Steve. <laughs> they, they who is going to get you up? Uh, and Michael, maybe you can, I'm not real sure who she's with. Um, it's She's a, she's with a consulting firm that the regional group has hired. Uh, she is Korean. I would suggest one of the things that I have been told, frankly, since um, I've attended one of these sessions already, um, please do not refer to them as South Koreans. They do not recognize that term, and that's offensive to them. Um, they, they see Korea as one country. They just have got some problems just the way that they view it. Um, this young lady is like I said, she's Korean. She grew up mostly over there, came to America, goes back, back and forth, whatnot. Um, so she's going to be the basic trainer on what goes on. Um, the, um, let's see, there's one other thing about that, too, that um, escapes me at the moment. But um, basically what's, what's going to happen here is we're going to have... 60 Koreans come in to Kokomo at a time. They rotate out every six months so they can go back home. And then you'll get 60 new ones in. That doesn't mean another training session because you guys will already have been trained on all of that. What happens at that point is uh, they're being trained over there in our rules. And you've heard me say before, like if Travis was to stop one of them for speeding or something, they're used to getting out of the car and coming back to him, so he's protected. That's not quite the way it works with us. And so they're learning our processes as we're learning, going to be learning theirs. So this isn't a situation where they come over here and our laws go by the by by way. It is there. Everybody's teaching everybody so that when Travis stops somebody and that guy gets out of the car, he knows okay. He's just reacting as he would normally react, and I'm not pulling the gun. I'm just going to get out, 
get your butt back in the car and I'm going to deal with this. You know, so that's the type of training that we're talking about. It's all cultural stuff. Nobody's asking because uh, I've run across this uh, already. Nobody's saying we have to live by their rules. We're just educating them to what our rules are and we're learning what their rules are so that when they make that mistake, we don't have a tragedy. That's really what this is all about. I think it's a great idea. I mean, it's just more knowledge and power. So at least thank we'll, we'll you. I was going to ask the purpose. I didn't want to sound insensitive, but thank you. No, it re it, it really is. It's just they're they're very very. The more I, the more I deal with this, the more I learn they're extremely sensitive people, and you only get one shot with them. Uh, for instance, if they came in to Fulton and they were really tr rudely treated at a restaurant or something, they communicate amongst themselves. And it's like, you don't want to go to Rochester, you don't want to go to Fulton County, because by golly, they just don't like us. You know, that type of thing. Um, so it's, it's a whole different culture. One thing I would recommend, if you have not gone on and Googled what the Korean language looks, alphabet looks like, do it. It's completely different. Mm -hmm. There's no ABC there. <laughs> Thank you. So anyway, she had reached out to me early on, and Michael's included in on it, basically, hey, can we do a set up a push responder training? So um, that, that is scheduled for February 26th from 9 to 11 out of the Sheriff's Office. So um, we will get information pushed out to all the fire and EMS and the dispatch and law enforcement. So um, other than that, that's all I've got. Yes, sir. Take a step back. Do we know when Wabash County ever that jail up there? Hopefully never, because we're making spring. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's what I get. <laughs> They were supposed to, when I talked to the sheriff there at the, the fall conference, they were supposed to be opened up the first of the year. But I do know that they had tarps all over the inside of the building last month because yeah. of I went by there last week and yeah. there was the first car sitting there. So, yeah, yeah. so I know they had major issues. Uh, so I, I don't know. But yeah, they're, they're paying us nice to, to house their inmates. So. Well, that's great. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's what we said. Thank you. So. Anyone else have any questions? Anyone else out there? Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. <coughs> Let's go down the room. You forgot Michael Wann. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We'll, All pick, right, we'll pick on him later. Oh. I just have a couple of things. Um, noticed the travel advisory were still yellow. Um, just depending on this weekend, where it might go to orange, who knows? Thought about leaving it on till sun or summertime, so <laughs> cover all bases. But anyway, that's what we're doing um, so far. Obviously, no road closures, what whatever. I will tell you the two EMA trucks, the newest ones, didn't like this type of weather and wouldn't start. So, but the good old trusty Durango from 2000 fired right up. Cool. I really hate to get rid of that. Um, so any questions on the weather or anything like that, I'll let you know about the next step. Um, on the 23rd, I am meeting to discuss um, plans for the homeless in regards to a warming and cooling uh, plan that I need to put in the comprehensive plan for the county. Um, with this being said, um, we're not really responsible for the homeless, but these uh, tools and so forth will be in the comprehensive plan and we will work with the uh, faith-based um, out of Kosciuszko County. They have a great plan that uh, we're going to try to follow. I've been following St. Joe County's plan as well. Um, but the whole point of it is I can help and uh, create a resource list, but we cannot maintain those shelters. Um, we have other issues. We're not trained in that mental capacity, and we don't have time to babysit because those places do have to be monitored. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, we open warming and cooling shelters at the rock or at the uh, fire stations and the volunteer, and obviously they're volunteer. So um, they're in a time of emergency or an outage and so forth. And um, we do have mutual agreement, mutual aid agreements, like with the schools. <coughs> and Red Cross does as well um, to open those up uh, larger domains for this reason. So 
anyway, so there was no money transactions with this. And every year, um, I make sure there's plenty of blankets and pillows out of the EMA building uh, for these individuals that may be homeless or needing a place to wherever they do. So it was always available. So do they know where to go? Uh, currently, there has been some generous donations to set them up, uh, the homeless, for a short period of time. Um, I don't want to not be politically correct in any kind okay. of uh, speaking here, but um, like there's things out there, United Way, and I'm not for sure how much money they have, but these faith-based groups and all these uh, groups that help um, these individuals from you know low income to whatever, uh, they really all need to collaborate, and that's what this effort is going to be like a collaboration instead of everybody doing their own thing and those resources being. So, this is in the working phase, it is right in now. the working phase. Okay. I have been working okay. uh, with this for a while. It's like herding cats because the county cannot be responsible for this, we cannot mm -hmm. keep putting money up for. Uh, people's choices mm -hmm. is a nice way to put it, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with that being said, um, we'll write a plan. The commissioners adopt that, and we'll bring in, you know, your your towns and so forth to get approval as well. Okay. So everybody's on the same page in each location. Mm -hmm. so, that's about all I have. Unless you have anything else, or have any questions for me, or anybody have any for Gail? No. Anyone out there? Well, Michael, she made me feel bad. You're next. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thanks, Gail. <Gino. laughs> I forgot Jerry over here in the corner. Well, she's she's there. She's I'm the time out. <laughs> Just a few things. Um, you have the contract, the annual contract for uh, our services in front of you. Um, I'm just presenting it for you tonight to sign or do whatever you want to deal with it. It does represent the increase that I asked for to $130,000. The city gave us 110, so we have uh, $240,000 to work with. The increase really is going to go toward a new website um, that we need, and you've got uh, that project going. Um, bringing back up, we've got uh, Charlie uh, Sparks, got the most amazing desk for him that was loaned to us. Uh, it fills his entire office space. Charlie's in and out working already. So uh, we are, uh, our first task is we're gonna start working with um, um, the city to update a required economic development plan that the state requires for us to deal with. Uh, so that'll be our first task. The second task is, and I'm really happy to let this be known um, we started out with about a hundred acres on the park south town and found out last night that um, they're continuing to negotiate on buying more property we might have about 300 acres uh, under our control in the next few weeks which is the right size that we want the ready program uh, we met with the state on the 11th all day long, presented our various programs. Um, I feel really comfortable saying that we're going to get both projects. Uh, Jana Vance has a child care learning center program that she's got set up, and the state was very impressed with it to the point that um, in an after a value after meeting evaluation meeting that we had uh it got said that um we need to look at this maybe as a state model oh, wow. it would, yeah wow it was really nice to hear that uh so we're i'm working with him to see what i don't expect anything this session or anything because they're already locked in but um i could see this in an interim study where we <coughs> take it out and move forward i think the uh industrial park will get uh funded as well so i think we have two good programs solid programs that we can move into the future um we're taking the programs that did not get what they call above the line do not get considered and i'm going to work with uh, various 
businesses and companies and the hospital and whatnot and move forward on those so um, we can go into ready three which is I really believe uh, will happen because uh, about a week ago two weeks ago maybe um, Eli Lilly Foundation announced that they are going to put 250 million dollars into the ready program uh, the official announcement comes in April so um, that doesn't mean we have 700 million coming at us we still have just the uh, we, we'll just get the 75 million for the county is what we'll get you know. um, but that's a continuation of the program so we're going to continue with the programs that didn't get funded and push them forward and there's other programs I was talking with Gail last night about another one that we're going to put in the pipeline <coughs> what, the state's, what the state wants out of us is they want to see us moving forward on our own and then when we push something when we when they throw a program like ready at us we can say we've already gone this far we need your help to get us the rest of the way they want to know what the county and the cities want to do in the next 5 10 15 years and we'll be putting together a program already with um, the city and the county making those plans seeing where we want to go we you know it, it's going to be what it, one of those things where what do you want to be when you want to grow up or when you grow up you know type of thing so that's pretty much what's going on um, there was one good thing that you guys will appreciate um, I held I had a meeting Monday and um, it was about blacker we talked with uh, Brian Lewis and, and uh, Trent um, they wanted to know exactly where we stood on Blacker, how much money the city and the county have to put out there in the future. We got all that figured out, whatnot. I can say truthfully that I can see Blacker up and running in um, the end of uh, the middle of, of the summer, and we can probably take that off the agenda from now on for a while. And uh, so that's that's a positive. Is, as far as I'm concerned so that's where we stand I'm going to ask you if you would vote on the um, contract tonight so that I can get all that underway and get, get moving on uh, other than that that's it for the moment yeah. right. but, uh, if there's any questions I'll try and answer them. Anything Michael? Nothing. Anybody out there? Thank you Michael I do have a few Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I don't have any notes, so I'll just have to go off my blind roots. They're not blind anymore. <laughs> have a bottle, as you can tell, I'm ready for a new application. Um, I don't have the statistics and data from 2023 because we're still awaiting a couple of toxicologies and two autopsy reports. So until I get that, I won't be able to define exactly what all happened uh, for our county this last year. For this year, it's been quite busy already. Um, we've had five families that we've served. <clears throat> Two of those were within probably an eight hour time period. And, um, and many of you probably heard that among those uh, treasured citizens loss was one from Akron who, um, they're having his visitation tonight. He was kind of iconic and known all over the county. So uh, it was especially sad because his father just passed away about the, a week and a half before. So it's a tough time for that family. And um, if you could keep everybody in your prayers, you know, for that. So I wanted to let you know that. Um, also, uh, last week I attended a two-day workshop in Carmel. And it was quite interesting. It was about some unique situations that sometimes you encounter it's not usual type scenarios um, but it was enlightening and I appreciated that uh, I've got a coroner's training board meeting coming up on February 9th I plan to attend that because it's a big meeting on finalizing our um, conferences for the summer in June so we're looking forward to that we're going to have hopefully the best ever that we've had last year it just kind of keeps in a crescendo and we had over 300 people there so um, we are the second biggest in the United States 
behind Colorado. So um, anyway, I'm proud of that and how our Indiana coroners and deputies work together and we have great teams. Um, let me see. There's also another workshop coming up toward the end of uh, February. It's on uh, mass fatality awareness for rural communities. So it kind of runs hand in hand with what we're doing um, with LEPC this year. We are going to have uh, an in-person type event. The last two years, you'll probably recall hearing the term tabletop. So we meet in a nice place that we all get together, collaborate and talk, and this will be something of action. Where we'll be at a scene, working, collaborating, and uh, reenacting something that might happen. So that's kind of mainly, mainly all I have for today to just get you updated on what's going on. Um, but do you have any questions? Anything for Jerry? No. Nope. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Gary. Yes, sir. You want to show her exactly what you do? <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Um, speak what the guy's been doing. Uh, of course, they've been running the brush cutter. Uh, they keep running it. Uh, they're over in uh, the one northwestern part of the county with that. That's been going very well. They've made a lot of progress with that. Uh, we get a lot of compliments on that. It's working well. Um, cutting trees with RMC. They've taken a break with them for the last two weeks. Uh, RMC went over and started working with Pulaski County. Uh, they're coming back to work with us Monday, starting Monday. Uh, so they cut trees in the uh, Other than that, they've been patching poles down and changing culverts. Uh, you know, so far, knock on wood, we haven't had a lot of winter to deal with, which has been nice. So hopefully that continues. Uh, Main things I wanted to talk to you tonight about were uh, grants, uh, community crossings. So NDOT's got uh, the first call for community crossings out right now. They raised it from a million dollars that they've been doing since 2016 uh, to a million and a half this fall. They've got some extra money they're going to uh, hand out. So uh, we're going to try to go out for a million and a half. So. Right now, uh, what I've got uh, listed, uh, we're going to try every call we go around the county. We can find a page and spread the money around, around the county. So this time we're going over uh, northwest. Uh, when we put in for uh, 400 north from State Road 17 to 1200 west, 600 north from State Road 17 to 1200 west. Uh, what's called Old 17 from 900 West, uh, or I'm sorry, 900 West, which is Old 17 uh, from the Olson Road to State Road 110. Uh, and then we're 1100 or 1175 West from 770 or from 75 North to 1200 West, which is Main Street through Bruce Lake. Yeah. Uh, 75 north from 1100 west to 1200 west. And then we've got Blackadder Drive up here in town, uh, which we're going to pay that or apply for it, try to get paid, finish out the industrial part there. And then, um, since we've got a little extra money uh, to apply for, we're going to try a couple of big multi plates. Uh, one of them's on 375 west, between 350 south and 200 south. And that's a big eight-foot multi-plate. It's 225-foot long. It runs right down the center of the road part of the way. So it's about $150,000 culvert to replace. So we're going to try to put that through. It's a multi-plate. It's such a big culvert. It comes in big eight-foot sections of pipe that you have to bolt together. Oh. So it'll take a couple days. It'll probably take a week for us to put that up all that pipe together by hand and then set it in with the crane. Okay. So they don't have to pay it up. Yeah. <laughs> Steve's, we put them together. They're, they're a pain in the butt. They're very expensive. 
and then we got another one down by uh, South Mud Lake on 250 East, uh, between 675 South and 200 East. That we're going to do the same thing. It's only seven, two feet long, but again, it's a big one, very expensive to do. And then we're going to put the Bible Restore, uh, which is the uh, it's an asphalt rejuvenator that we put on all the roads and restore uh, pave that we've been doing on these community crossings. We'll go back and put it on the ones we just did this last year. So those are the projects that we're trying to do for community crossings this year. So it comes to a million and a half. Actually, two million dollars of work because we'll have half a million of match money. <coughs> if, much? if we get it all accepted. And we have the match money? So yeah, we would use wheel tax, surtax money like we've done, and human bridge money, and some hand money on it. So unless you guys want to come up with some money somewhere else, if you happen to use it. You're doing a fine job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, federal aid projects. Uh, we've got Bridge 161, which we're going to be letting this fall. Uh, we've been doing some work on the right of with that. Got a few issues we're trying to hammer out there. But, uh, I think it's around October, November. We go out for bids on that project as well, as well. And that one's down by Grass Creek, it's over the Grass Creek. Um, we've got Old 31 South, which on the 18th of this month, uh, we go out for bids on that. That's uh, from the city limits down to Nyoma Lake. Uh, that's a repaving project for it. So hopefully we get that. Uh, good bids on that. And then uh, on the 23rd, I do a presentation. We put in a fall call for federal aid for Old 31 North from the River Bridge up to 110. So we're trying to capture that grant. And that'd be five years from now if we get it. So that would be an expensive one if we get it. And then uh, Bridge 33, that one's about four years out, four and a half years out, up there at Talma. The bridge over the tip of the nail. That one we've got going on in it. Of course, we have bridge inspections continuously. Uh, the last thing I had tonight, uh, last night I presented to the commissioners, uh, was a uh, task order from USI <coughs> for the ADA and Title VI updates. Uh, came to them back in December. Uh, our, uh, the Fed, uh, the NDOT, they want us to update. They're going around to all the counties and are asking us to update all the transition plans and ours is no different than anybody else's in the state. So commissioners had to go to USI and ask them to help us with uh, updating it. Uh, USI gave us a task order for updating it. We've got all the information. We've got a 120 days to get this, to get our ADA <coughs> Title VI all in compliance. It put us into early April. Um, so they gave us that task order to complete. I sent you and Phil asked some tough questions last night of you know, what all was involved in getting that prepared and everything. I sent you that information earlier today. So. And, and thank you. That was most helpful. And, and didn't Jody tell us that um, fulfilling this by the time frame of mid-April is, is dependent upon INDOT awarding? Yes. Uh, so it's a big deal. Yes. It, it, all of our federal grants and everything are so we have to comply timely. Yes. Is that right? right? They depend on us having being compliant with ADA and Title VI. Right. So in that regard, the whatever the cost is, the twenty-six thousand three hundred seventeen dollars for them to do it is nothing. And I believe it was uh, Rick. You was superintendent back when you did it the first two, time back two, in two thousand twelve. Twelve. Jody said last night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think they've probably done it the first time. I believe so. Mm -hmm. 
Well, they've been different from right. Jody. DLZ. DLZ. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And it was a lot bigger deal then. Mm -hmm. They're just refreshing it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, still, this is going to require, require 116 hours to get all this completed for Title VI and ADA. <coughs> So it's not a small project. Yeah, I'm still after Heather and I went around and collected all the information from all the county buildings and such. So we, we saved you that much money. Oh, okay. So, okay. I don't know how much that helped, but we did some. Everything helps. So, you need our approval? So tell Jody I said thank you. Well, what you need from you is the commissioners approved it pending your funding. How are we going to pay for it? Yeah. How are we going to pay for it? Ideas? Well, I, I'm going to say You do? I do too. Okay. Go first. Nope. You? <laughs> Me? Ladies first. Um, I say. Rainy day. I don't have an issue with that. They say rainy day. That's what he's going to say. There's a little over a million dollars in there. Yes, there is. And I hate saying community crossings because we have fit when those commissioners want to put their hands in the O Street Fund. Yeah. yeah. So I'll entertain a motion that we approve the funding for the ADA assessment out of rainy day fund. Do I have a motion? Is that the 26,316? Pardon me? Is that the 26,316? Yes, yes. That's, that's total cost. I make motion to go. So we made a motion. Second? I'll second. Pete second. All in favor? There you go, sir. Don't say something about wanting to pay community crossing though. No, no, she I, I misspoke. Wrong. I, I misspoke. <laughs> you I misspoke. Wrong. You, you, I gave the, you gave me the wrong look. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's all I had unless you had anything else for me. a year. She, um, Casey did put that in her budget, um, but she, it's not on the uh, salary ordinance. So when we were, when we, the council, were reviewing salary ordinances and budgets, we just overlooked the uh, supplemental for the level three certification and didn't increase it from a thousand uh, annually to fifteen hundred dollars annually. So um, we met, we discussed it, and we are in agreement to approve Casey's request to increase that supplemental pay from a thousand a year to fifteen hundred dollars a year. And we're making a recommendation <coughs> to the entire council. It's the supplemental for. Um, the lady in her office has a 
attain her level, and this requires lots of education and classes and stuff, her level three assessor appraiser certification. And she's also the same lady that um, goes out in the field and data collects all permits for new construction. We have a motion to approve the supplemental increase. I'll second. Chase second. Steve first and Chase second. All approved. Seven zero. Thank you. Okay, moving right along. That's still one second. Moving along. We have here. First thing is the agreement for the economic development service. And this is our agreement. It's effective the first day of January 2024 between Fulton County, Indiana and the Fulton County Economic Development Corporation. Fulton County desires to maintain a viable and respected economic development presence that conducts programs and activities for future economic development and growth in accordance with county needs and long-term goals. The Fulton County Development Corporation agrees to provide certain standard, commonly accepted economic development services and services which result in a design implementation yeah, that word, <laughs> of long-term projects related to economic workforce and commercial, industrial, or related business development in Fulton County. Therefore, it is agreed by Fulton County, Indiana, and the Fulton County Economic Development Corporation. It is a long list of duties and everything else that I'm not going to read. If you want it, you're welcome to look at it. Again, the agreement to be effective from the first day of January to the 31st day of December 2024. The county agrees to pay the Fulton County Economic Development Corporation a fixed sum of $130,000 the corporation's budget. Payments are 12 equal installments of $10,833.34. It also includes our portion of the North Central Economic Regional Planning Commission, as well as membership of the Central Indiana Economic Development Partnership. Um, do I have a motion to approve this agreement? I'll move to approve. Bill moved to approve. Do we have a second? I'll oh, second. Randy seconded. All in favor? 3270. I've got some stuff we need to sign. Actually, yeah, we have. Okay, next be an ordinance. And again, it's 20-some pages long, so I'll just read the first part of it. And this is the first reading, is that correct? Yes. This is the first reading of an ordinance. Ordinance 01172024, an ordinance amending the county of Fulton salary schedule and compensation policies for 2024. Whereas the county of Fulton, Indiana is an equal opportunity employer Whereas the intent of Fulton County to comply with applicable federal and state Indiana employment laws and regulations. Whereas Indiana Code 36-2-5-3, Section 3, Subsection A, establishes that the county fiscal body shall fix compensation of officers, duties, and other employees whose compensation is payable from the County General Fund, County Highway Fund, County Health Fund, Park and Recreation Fund, Aviation Fund, and any other fund which the county auditor issues warrants for compensations. This includes the power to fix the number of officers, deputies, and other employees, describe and classify positions and services, adopt schedules of compensation, and hire or contract with persons to assist in the development of compensation. I will ask for a motion to approve the first reading of the county salary ordinance. So moved. Phil so moved. I'll second. Lori seconded. All in favor? 7-0. And we will have a second reading. And 
have a motion to have a second, third reading by title only. Steve made a motion. Pete seconded. Ordinance 01172024, an ordinance amending County of Fulton, Indiana, salary schedule and compensation policies for 2024. I will request a motion to approve a second, third reading by title. So moved. So, Lori seconded. All in favor? Pass 7 0. So that's reflected on this. That that's that's I why. That. Oh, I'm sorry. That's that's why we're doing this. Appreciate that. It's all right. Morning signatures. Okay. And. Next up, we have minutes, the first minutes. Hopefully you've had a chance to look them over. First minutes are from our regular meeting, Tuesday, December 12th, 2023. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as written? I'll so move. Granted, <coughs> move, do I have a second? Pete can't, because he wasn't here. Oh, um, I'll second. All right, Randy's first. Phil, second. <clears throat> All in favor? Six zero. Thank you. Signing and passing. Yes, sir. Yes. Next is uh, our organizational meeting on Wednesday, January third. I have one correction on this is the plan commission. Is that the right one, Lori? Yes, it is. The plan commission, Lori, but then Chase got a hold of me and requested that he be reappointed to that. So instead of Lori, yep. it is Chase. Pete? No, sir. Randy? No, sir. Chase? 
No. Lori? No. Steve? No. Bill? I do not. I do not. Christina? Anyone else with old business? And we'll move on to new business. Negative. Ready? No. Case? Case. No. Lori? No, sir. Steve? <clears throat> Happy birthday to uh, Bill about a week later. She turned 46 last week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And that's <laughs> Thank you so much. Hopefully you got that on TV. <laughs> Thank you. Bill, new business? Um, just thank Christina for sending out the 2024 budget to all of us. And also, um, I put a 2020 plat book on um, everybody's, gave to all the council members, and that was from uh, Megan Mallott. They had some extras, so she left them in our council mailbox for everyone to have. So I want to thank them for that. That's all. Mine, I would like to thank Josh and Devin. Uh, someone tried to hack into our email accounts, and uh, they were on top of it, and they got stopped. And so uh, I want to thank them for their due diligence and their hard work of getting that uh, mitigated so it didn't affect anyone. And they're working, I guess, according to Josh, it was, I'm going to say 10 to 15 counties. got hit all of them at once. Really? And uh, wow. so that's why we spend all these big dollars on computers and virus protection and all this firewalls and stuff. And yeah. I want to thank Josh and Devin for their hard work on stopping that. And that's all I have. Christina? Anyone else? Good business? Uh, I'll just make a comment. We did sign the insurance last night for a casualty and liability. It went up, what, roughly 70000 each? About 75000 About 75000 so big hit. Deductibles went through the roof. There's some deductibles. Yours 10000 Travis, I think. Mine's five. Five. Highway trucks are 10. Okay. It is. It's dear. Yeah. So. Did, did this cost you guys a lot? I know you guys was there, but the rest of the council probably didn't see that last night. So, um. okay, thank you. Anyone else? New business? Steve, I got one more thing. No, sir. Go ahead. Uh, condolences to Joe Day's family. I just seen his obituary day and realized he passed Saturday. He's been on the 911 committee for well ever since I've been here. So, condolences to his family. Yes, absolutely. I've known him for 40 some odd years and worked with him in the fire department through the hardware. Yes, we lost a good one there. And unfortunately, like Jerry said, his father passed away two weeks before, and the days were very instrumental in Akron and Henry Township, let alone Fulton County. So, yes, they will be missed. We'll be doing a last call for him tomorrow. Good, good. That's. The wife could buy the funeral home this afternoon. You'd have to get a reservation and get a place to park. So, yeah. Um, so, anyway, if there are any new business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Steve, Steve, second it. All in favor? Thank you very much.